This presentation will demonstrate that Ron Wyatt's Ark of the Covenant claim is a modern resurrection of a medieval Catholic tale concerning the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, one of Christianity's most sacred spots. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre, Sepulchre means tomb or burial place, is in the Christian quarter of the old city of Jerusalem and was founded by the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great. And around about 326 AD, Constantine ordered that the temple to Jupiter and Venus be replaced by this church. So this church is built upon the original site of the temple of the pagan gods, Jupiter and Venus. Control of the church itself is shared mainly by the Roman Catholic, Greek Orthodox and Armenian Apostolic. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre has been a major Christian pilgrimage destination since its creation in the 4th century and is recognised as the site where Jesus was crucified, buried and rose from the dead. It is visited by over a million people each year. In the bottom left-hand corner is the entrance into the church. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre contains a bewildering conglomeration of 30 plus chapels and worship spaces and according to tradition houses the two holiest sites in Christianity, the site where Jesus of Nazareth was crucified at a place known as Calvary in Latin or Golgotha in Aramaic. Both terms translate to the place of the skull or the burying place. And the other holiest site is Jesus' empty tomb where he is said to have been buried and resurrected. Within the church proper are the last four stations of the Via Dolorosa, or the Way of Suffering, or the Sorrowful Way, representing the final episodes of the Passion of Jesus. Number one, the nailing of Jesus to the cross. Number two, Jesus dying on the cross. Number three, Jesus taken down from the cross. And number four, Jesus laid down in the tomb. Let us look inside. On entering the door and immediately to the right is a staircase leading up to Golgotha or that Calvary site. These stairs lead firstly to the Franciscan Chapel of the Nailing of the Cross, marking the spot where it is believed Jesus was nailed to the cross. A closer look at the mosaic with a Roman soldier, Mary his mother standing over him and Mary Magdalene weeping. Next to that mosaic is Mary in her pagan grotto shrine. A close-up reveals a sword piercing her heart in reference to Luke 2 verse 35. Right next door to the chapel of the nailing of the cross and Mary in her grotto is the chapel of the crucifixion or the death chapel, marking the literal spot where they say Christ was crucified. Here you see Jesus hanging on the cross with Mary on the left and the Apostle John here on the right. The altar of crucifixion is in the front where the alleged rock of Calvary is encased in glass on both sides of the altar. And beneath the altar there is a cross hole said to be the place where the cross stood. A closer image Notice the sun disks around their heads. A closer look at the rock of Golgotha or Calvary, the rock where Christ was crucified. A closer look at a worshipper under the altar of crucifixion. Under the altar of crucifixion is the cross hole where they say that the cross of Christ stood. And you can see someone just about to put their hand down the hole to touch the bedrock underneath. Before the altar of the crucifixion is an image on the floor of the sun. Directly downstairs underneath the chapel of the crucifixion is the chapel of Adam. According to Christian tradition, Jesus was crucified above the place where Adam was buried. Many believe the blood of Christ ran down the cross, down through the rocks, shown here, behind the window, 
and the blood filled Adam's skull, anointing it, thereby expiating or atoning for Adam's original sin, and enabling the resurrection of Adam and Eve and many others. A closer picture behind the window of Adam's skull chamber, where the blood of Christ ran down to anoint it. The stone of anointing or the stone of unction. This stone marks the place where Jesus' body was prepared for burial after he was taken down from the cross. The top of the stone is exposed and visitors can touch or kneel at the stone and reflect on the dead body of Jesus laying on the stone and being prepared for his burial. And then, of course, Jesus' burial tomb from where he resurrected, another venerated site in the Christian world. So where did the Ark of the Covenant story come from in Seventh-day Adventism? It originated from Ron Wyatt and was strongly exaggerated by Jonathan Gray. Both profess Seventh-day Adventists. And many others now purport their story within the Adventist church as being biblical. And Ron Wyatt went a giant step further from Catholicism to claim he collected some of Christ's blood and after having it analysed, was found to be alive, and the DNA of the blood contained only 24 chromosomes, 23 from Mary, and one from a non-human source. Was Jesus fully man? Did he fully die? Or was he only partially man? And did he only partially die? Now, it seems a little too coincidental that two such fantastic fairy tales with so many similarities could exist without one depending upon the other. Both fairy tales teach that a holy relic was anointed with the supposed blood of Christ, which trickled down through a crack in the rock at the time Christ was crucified, thus enabling the resurrection of many others at the resurrection of Christ. Clearly, the Catholic story would be rejected by most Seventh-day Adventists, and it also flies in the face of Seventh-day Adventist rejection of the Augustinian doctrine of original sin. However, the Adventist story is accepted because it was designed by a professed Seventh-day Adventist as new light, and yet the theological error is the same. Both concepts are unbiblical and come from the father of lies. Nevertheless, I invite you to compare the stories and to challenge yourself with a proposition. If you were told Ron Wyatt's version of the story by a Roman Catholic priest, would you believe it? A further theological error of Ron Wyatt and Jonathan Gray, written in Gray's book, The Ark of the Covenant, on page 413, states that the Day of Atonement was completed at the cross by Christ's blood dripping on the earthly mercy seat of the earthly Ark of the Covenant. This is a total resting of the type antitype in scripture. Blood was never sprinkled on the mercy seat at the time of the Passover, which was the undoubted time that Christ died. Blood was only administered on the mercy seat on the Day of Atonement, which was fully six months later in the type, and in the antitype did not commence until 22nd of October 1844, according to the prophecy of Daniel chapter 8 and 9 and the book of Ezra, which is the correct teaching of Seventh-day Adventists. Furthermore, the book of Hebrews states that Jesus ascended to heaven in order to commence a more perfect high priestly ministry. Seventh-day Adventists teach, as the Bible teaches, that Christ's blood was to be ministered in the heavenly sanctuary after his ascension. After his ascension, our Saviour was to begin his work as our high priest. Says Paul in Hebrews 9.24, Christ does not enter into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. And from the Spirit of Prophecy, Eternity Past, page 249, paragraph 3, Christ at his ascension appeared in the presence of God 
to plead his blood in behalf of penitent believers.